Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Salem. Good morning. So glad to see your shining faces today. I invite you to stand as you're able. Join us in singing, I Start My Day. One, two, three. As Clay brings forward the Christ light, I invite you to join us in singing, I see the Christ light, and look around and see all the light among us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Elizabeth and I'm your platform assistant today. We welcome you to Unity of Salem today in the same warm and loving spirit with which Jesus greeted his friends. We greet you knowing that no one is here by accident or coincidence. We are each an essential part of the energy that is Unity of Salem. Right where you are, along your life path, on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here.
Good morning. Let's breathe together. Ah, we've been singing together. Let's breathe together. And we breathe in the energy of love, light, joy, and peace that we were singing about. You can't buy that at the grocery store, have you noticed? <laughs> Walmart's out. It just It's not on the shelf. It's right here. So we begin with that essence. I invite you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Put your hand on your heart or open your hand as an acknowledgement of the ethereal energy that we cannot see. The beloved that goes by many names, the one, the spirit, the energy, lives in us and moves through us today and every day. This energy surrounds us and is in every cell and organism on our planet. We acknowledge that we are part of this energy and that we have come together to celebrate it, to acknowledge it, and to experience it. This is a holy moment where everything can stop and we can re-remember -re what is true for us. We give thanks for this gathering today we also include Reverend Patty in this prayer. May she know that we are here together, blessing her, seeing her health restored. And just as we are breathing, we include her in that breath. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Salem to today, we'd like to especially welcome you. Um, if there, if there is anyone new here uh, uh, this morning, uh, if you feel comfortable, I invite you to just raise your hand so I can see who you are. It looks like um, it looks like no uh, everyone has. Uh, <laughs> there is no one new here in the sanctuary today. But if you are um, new, you are on online watching. Um, I invite you to uh, give the office a call. We would love to chat with you, answer any questions you might have, give you any uh, uh, more information about uh, who we are and, and what we're all about. And we also have a, um, a gift we would like to send to you. So um, welcome and anyone who is, who is new and watching today and welcome everyone who is, who is here today. <laughs> we're doing things are things are a little different today, so we're <laughs> getting a little uh, discombobulated. Okay, yes, I do have some announcements to share with you today. <laughs> You've already met Reverend Victoria, uh, who will be speaking today and continue her uh, series on the 30th. She is the chair of Unity Worldwide's, uh, World, Worldwide's Global Interfaith Initiative and Multicultural Team. Danita Wallace, our own prayer chaplain and long-term member, will be speaking on the 23rd. Uh, Reverend Patty is taking some time off for self-care. Uh, Reverend Victoria will also offer a workshop immediately after the service on the 30th, and she will be speaking to you more about that during her talk. Uh, you can sign up in the Information Center for that. Uh, join us for hospitality before and after Sunday service. We are serving coffee and tea, and we do ask that you put a lid on your beverage to help keep the sanctuary clean. Our prayer chaplain for today is Joanne Icavino. She will be here available for one-on-one -on -one prayer with you after the service on our sun porch. And now let's join together and sing Witness.
We now join together in affirming Unity of Salem's mission statement. Unity of Salem nurtures spiritual growth in inclusive, loving community. And our vision statement, centered in spirit, we create a world of unlimited peace, love, and joy, and our core values. Inclusiveness, spirit-led, compassion, love, joy, and integrity. I now invite Clay to share our reading for today. The word for today is celebrate, and our affirmation is, I celebrate life today. As I grow older, I receive and appreciate all I see, hear, feel, and taste, and smell as a gift from the, and smell as a gift from the divine, an opportunity to grow and to develop into who I have become here to be. Basking in the presence of God, I am filled. I give joyously and abundantly of my time and talents through acts of loving kindness, goodwill, camaraderie with everyone. What a joy and blessing it is to celebrate life. Though just one day out of the year marks my birthday, I live with the awareness that on each now moment, I begin again, becoming as a little child. I enthusiastically greet each day, every sensation and every interaction, however small, with awe and wonder as if experiencing life for the first time. And from Psalm 1611, you show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore.
It's so good to be here. It was important for me to be here today. I wanted to bless Reverend Patty and give her some rest. Ah, deep breath, rest. And so the minute I knew that she was uh, healing, I'll affirm that, that she was healing, I chose to send an email and say, I'll be there. And so here we are today together. Isn't spring wonderful? We came down here from Portland in a downpour. We got here and it's not raining. What's that about? That's what I want to know. And the opportunity every year to watch spring return, would you agree? And I have a reading from Mark Nepo in my book, The Awakening. And I didn't bring my book today because last year when I was here, I left it and they had to mail it to me. So I just brought a copy so I could read it to you. Spring is a new beginning. The courage of the seed. Do we ever think of our plants having courage to start out again, to bring those little shoots out, those little buds? And Paul and I have moved in the last couple of years, so I have all new plants. And I go out and I talk to them. I said, there you are, here you come. And that takes, it appears, courage to break through the dirt, the gravel, the stuff that is in the ground. So I'm just gonna read a couple lines from Mark Nepo. All around us, everything small and buried surrenders to a process that none of the buried parts can see. This innate surrender allows everything edible and fragrant to break ground into a light and life that we call spring. In nature, we are quietly given countless models on how to give ourselves over to what happens and appears to be in the dark. It appears to be hopeless, but which ultimately is an awakening that is beyond all imagining. So my message today is about who did you come here to be? Who did I come here to be? Who did we come here to be as spiritual beings? Now, we all know we're spiritual beings in a human body. Just nod your head. Thank you. I'm in the right place at the right time. We're spiritual beings in a human body. And a lot of the time we spend in this mental mind, I want, I could, I can't, I desire. And we're all... Do you have that little hamster wheel in your mind? I do. It's busy. It's just very busy. And it's, it's about that mental thought that sometimes takes us away from that spiritual knowing. Would you agree with that? Yeah. That mental thought distracts, gets off the exit of the highway. And the highway is that ability to know, I am here for a spiritual purpose. I love the... Uh, song witness. I've never. I love uh, Daniel Nimod, but I'd never heard that song. And that's what we're here to witness: is our purpose as a spiritual being. Yes, we go to the grocery store. Yes, we raise children. We have a job. We do all these things, and we are more than that. We are more than that. I'll say it again. And we are more than that. We are spiritual beings. And we are here to re-remember how to live that way. And that's what I want to share with you today. Do I have the courage to live that part of me? Do I have the courage to move beyond just my thoughts, my ideas, my mental perceptions, and go inward and listen? Listen to that resounding message. I'm here. I'm here. It's called letting go, isn't it? Because that message is so quiet. We have all this busyness. Woo! And the message is quiet. 
I don't know about you, but I've often uh, set goals. Has anyone here set goals before? Please, please be honest. I've set goals. And you know what happened? They didn't always quite work out the way I thought. Now, goals are measurable. And I'm say not saying they're good or bad. They're measurable. And if you're always measuring your life, you're often disappointed. Mm hmm mm hmm You're often disappointed. At least that's been my experience. So if I'm not about setting goals in a measurable way, what am I listening to? That's the outer world. I'm listening to the power of my own intentions. Now, what's the difference between goals and intentions? Seems very similar. Seems very similar. The difference between goals and intentions is intentions are creative. They're not on a scale. They are calling on something within me that is an energy. And it's outside, too. Charles Fillmore called it the ethers, the stuff, the unseen, that which is available to us that isn't on the shelves in Walmart. It's right here. It's right here. It doesn't cost anything. You don't have to barter for it. It's right here. And so as I go about my spiritual quest, my spiritual journey, I find that these spiritual intentions are whispering to me. Shh. They're very quiet. They're very, very quiet. And the message is personal. We do not hold intentions for others. <gasps> oh, please let me. Oh, please let me fix you. Oh, please let me tell you what to do. It's, it's personal. It's creative. And we don't know how to do it. <laughs> and that's pretty scary. Because we, we, as humans, like to know how to do everything. And that spiritual intention comes with a knowing without the roadmap. How do I get from A to Z? I'm not measuring goals. I'm not following a mental process. That's right. That's right. Because the guidance in you is leading you step by step, maybe running quickly or very slowly. We never know. The power of the intention that is within you, it doesn't come from someone else. I don't, I've had many opportunities and that's why I'm talking about this, to experience this feeling, this knowing, this inner wisdom of intention and following it and then stopping and going back reverse to my old habits. Mm. Oh, there's only three of us in this room. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's, that's amazing. And so when we begin the road to listening and creating intention with the universe, this is my favorite part, there is an energy that we align with and we agree with. We're in alignment and agreement with that which is more than I am. Ooh, breathe. I'm in alignment and agreement with more than I am. And that energy is calling me forth into my greater good. It's calling me forth into my greater good. What happens? What did I say? You turn. Because at a certain point, that sense of feeling, I can't. I can't. It won't happen. It only happens for other people. Won't work for me. Yes, it will. In the whispers. 
So what I'm asking you, if you're on this road with me, and I'm gonna be doing another week and a workshop on this subject, who I came here to be, nobody else knows who you came here to be. It's unique to you. It's unique to me. And in that knowing, in aligning and agreeing with the presence we call God, we call good, we call many love, light, energy. Some people call it Buddha. Some people call it Mohammed. It's an energy. It's a light. It's a life force, if you will. And it brings me forward. Anyone ever feel stuck in your life? I have. Questioning, why am I here? What's my purpose? Your purpose is within you. It's not in a book. It's not on an a, a internet site. You don't have to watch a video. It's in you. It's in you. And that knowing will lead you to an understanding of what is your next steps. So in my process, what I have done is I've taken time every morning and every evening to write something, to have quiet moments in meditation, to listen, to walk in nature, and be fed by the spiritual surroundings that has so much courage, the courage to, en to encourage us. And in that moment, we realize, ah, oh, there is something. There is something in here. It may be something to do. It may be something to be. And it's personal just for you. <sighs> the universe, God, spirit, whatever we call it, is impersonal, and we experience it personally. I love that. The universal energy and we each experience it in our own awareness. So resistance. Anyone ever experienced resistance to that call? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. It's normal. It's normal. Resistance is normal. And it's, anyone ever experienced thoughts of fear? This can't happen. This won't happen. I tried it before. And it didn't work out. Good. That's good. Well, that was before, and we're here now. This is a new day. This is a new dawn. <sighs> so how do we handle the resistance? So I'm going to tell you about uh, something I was aw I've been aware of for 30-plus years that has helped me so much. And it's a technique. And it's how do I clear that negative self-talk? How do I clear that monkey mind? And we're going to do some of this in our workshop. I'll go into it more. What, this is a woman whose book I read 40 plus years ago. Her name is Sandra Ray. I don't remember the book, but she talked about it. She's a psychologist. She talked about a clearing technique uh, with your negative self-talk. And I have used this so many times in my life. So whatever it is you're intending, you write that. I am. I am. I am. I am. Whatever it is your intention is. I am moving into a new consciousness. I am volunteering to help children in schools. I am. Whatever your little voice says is your next spiritual step. I am. And then what happens? At least in my little beingness, it says, no, you're not. What are you, who are you kidding? That's not going to happen. It didn't work last time. <laughs> so the clearing technique is you write that intention, and then you write it didn't happen last time. And then you write your intention. It only happens to other people. Then you write your intention. And the negative self-talk, you keep writing it. 
You just keep going down the intention. The first time I did it, it took 30 times. And I cleared it. My daddy wouldn't live like that. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody will believe me, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it just went on and on. And then you come back the next day and you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. I did it for 60 days before I actually cleared it. That's how much monkey mind has taken hold in here. And it's an ability to clear that negative self-talk that is not real. That is not real. Your intention is real. Now I'm going to share a, a, a little, um, me I call it a metaphor, that comes from the way, the person I heard share it is Deepak Chopra, but it's scientific. And you, I'm sure you may have heard it before. It's about the, the uh, going from the caterpillar to the butterfly and how that process happens. And the process, can you imagine from being this little squiggly thing that people almost step on to being this gorgeous butterfly flying? How do you transform from that consciousness? How do we transform from whatever we are with a belief that we, we are not enough? How do we transform that into soaring and living our spiritual consciousness? How do we do it? Well, we see it in nature everywhere. Transformation is happening in every animal plant on, the, on our planet. The butterfly goes, comes through a process from that caterpillar. That little caterpillar, I can't imagine. That little caterpillar looks up at the butterfly and says, that's impossible. I could never do that. But within it is cells that are going to create the next phase. So you've probably heard about this, but as the caterpillar decomposes, something shows up called imaginal cells. I love that word. Imaginal cells. And imaginal cells carry the DNA of the butterfly. Now they weren't there before, but the imaginal cells are there. They're in the goo. They're in the, as, as this is decomposing, is getting all gooey and yucky and in there is imaginal cells. The part that's amazing to me is there are very few imaginal cells. And that carries the butterfly DNA. The imaginal cells eventually take over the goo and there's very few of them. Remember this. You just keep coming back. That imaginal cells keep coming back, keep coming back. And it's such a process as it goes through the cocoon and goes through the, the uh, shifts and the stages and phases, and then eventually is a butterfly. You and I are butterflies. And we've gone through many stages from being a caterpillar. We've, we've gone through the goo. We've gone through the mush. We've, we've We've stepped forward and stepped back. Would you agree? And so how do I live in conscious awareness of my intentions? How do I take my next steps forward into that new way of being, new way of seeing, new way of discerning what is real in the world? What is my purpose? What is? this about. And as we align and agree with that which is our purpose, our life flourishes. Now I have lived this for many years. I've gone to the mall looking for a red dress for Easter. And I've gone and I've held the intention I'm going to have a red dress for Easter. I've gone into every store there is no red des dresses for Easter. There's pink, there's purple, there's everything. The last store in the mall, there is one red dress that fits me. With our new home, Paul and I went through this whole process. We looked at hundreds of houses. And it wasn't until our house was sold that the perfect house 
was for sale. Power of intention. La two weekends ago, I spoke at a retreat, and I spoke on intention, the power of intention. I came home, and I wrote, I would like to speak more, and here I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we are. So let's take a moment. Ah, get comfy. If you have anything in your lap, set it aside. Shrug your shoulders. Ah. <laughs> Do we get to dim these lights? Can we dim these lights at all? No? Cameras. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> breathing in and breathing out. I have come here to be. Say this to yourself. I have come here to be. To be a spiritual being. Living a life of blessing. The divine in me is leading me Deeper breaths, getting quieter and quieter, listening, listening, listening. And as we, as we have some time in the silence, Aligning, feel your energy aligning with that which is more than you. That which we call God, that which we call good, that which we call love. I align with my purpose. I am in agreement with my purpose and am willing. I am willing. And as I affirm this truth, I know that the universe, the spirit, the light, the love, the energy is moving on my behalf. Moving and bringing circumstances, situations, people, that which is needed to take the next step on my path of conscious awareness. I invite you to open your hands as an outer sign. I am willing.
in the name of all great spiritual teachers. We are truly grateful. To re-remember, re-remember that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, we thank each one of you, recognizing that unity of Salem would not be possible without your tithes. Will the ushers please come forward? I invite you now to just take your gift, hold it in your hand, and instill it with love, the great multiplier. We bless the gift and the giver, knowing how much God is blessing us. Please join me in our offering affirmation. Divine love flowing in, through, and as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God.
We're going to bless these gifts and the outpouring of love and light that you put into these gifts. These are the energy that brings this ministry forward. And so we are truly, truly grateful. Amen. Amen. I did want to say that my um, workshop and my talk on the 30th, on the 30th I'll be speaking on our inner wisdom. How do we truly access that inner wisdom? There's so much noise, so much noise in the world. So how do we actually access that inner wisdom? And then in the workshop, we'll be going into manifestation. We've decided who we are. We've listened to our inner wisdom. And now we're aligning with the process of manifestation. And it really is a process to learn. And so uh, if you can be at that workshop, that'll be great. You can sign up in the um, information, center. information center. Thank you. I was going to call it the coffee room, but I knew that wasn't the right name. <laughs> and if you know someone that you think would like to be part of that, please ask them to join us on that day. And we need at least six people to do that workshop. So ask someone to join you if you really want to make that happen. And I would love to go through that process with you. Now I invite you all to stand and join us in our closing song, We Are a Circle. And we're to put our hand on our heart. close with a prayer for protection. I also have uh, a new edition called the Prayer of Transformation. So I will share that with you after we do the first one. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and God is well. Kay, you're going to have to help me. This is called the power, the uh, prayer of transformation. I'll say a line, and then you say it after me. The light of God is in me. The light of God is in me. The love of God moves through me. The love of God moves through me. The power of God leads me. The power of God leads me. And the presence of God is who I am. And the presence of God is who I am. 
and wherever I go, God is, and all is well. Thank you so much for today.